our next presenter is going to be talking about integration architecture for the automotive digital thread. Um, we're happy to be able to have Jens Kruger um, here uh, to be able to talk about uh, this topic. He's studied computer science and business administration with a pre-PDM diploma thesis on technical databases, worked eight years in engineering IT, international tier one automotive supplier, uh, and, and is, is the major part of project manager for the global PDM project. Uh, he's worked uh, since 1998 for NTT data uh, uh, as a consultant and manager in the Competence Center for Engineering Consulting. Currently, he manages the competence units for POM strategy and architecture. Uh, his focus topics are on enterprise architecture, including integration architecture, systems engineering, ALM, and PLM for customers in automotive and aerospace. And we're happy to welcome him to be able to talk about uh, what's going on for integration architecture for the automotive digital thread. With that, thank you so much, Jens, for joining us. And the floor is now yours. Uh, thank you, Robert. Can you hear me? We can. We can see your screen and we can hear you. Great, thanks for this introduction. I think you said I've been working for NT Data for uh, until 98. No, I'm still with them. <laughs> so uh, thanks for that introduction. I'm happy to be at OSLC Fest. You know, I've followed your work during the last years, but have not been very active. So I guess I have to do a quick uh, well, introduction. NTT is well known in Japan, but maybe not so much in the rest of the world. So NTT is the Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Corporation. Uh, you see one 330,000 employees globally. NTT Data is the IT services company in the NTT. I have a lot of background noise. Not sure if anyone could go on mute. Um, so NTT Data is the IT services company in that NTT group with about 140,000 employees. I joined this company in 98, as you said, coming to our topic. I don't like uh, this term digital twin and Fred, and I don't like consultants presenting about definitions and benefits and market size and so on. I assume that's my role in this community, but after 30 plus years in this PLM, systems engineering, virtual product development topic, things like 3D models and simulations, uh, complex product structures are pretty much fundamental. So I much prefer to talk about requirements and use cases that are solving actual customer pro uh, problems and try to give you a perspective uh, as, as we see automotive today. We are mainly working with the OEMs in Germany, obviously Volkswagen Group, BMW, Mercedes, and, and some uh, first year suppliers. So I prepared an agenda focusing on the requirements, the automotive digital threat in four areas, the actual product development, the operations, interoperability, and the IT infrastructure. So let's start with the product development. That's the comfort zone for most of us. And, and Eric Herzog from Saab covered this in his earlier presentation. So I will make this quick. I like to think of product structure as the skeleton of the digital twin. And we have lots of them, the digital threat basically connects uh, the items and structures with each other. And uh, we have all these things like versions, revisions, alternatives, options, so this whole configuration logic uh, that's distributed over multiple systems. Configuration of requirements might be a different thing than configuration of e-bombs and so on. And we need the ability to baseline them, not just the links, but also the actual artifacts, uh, for example, for product liability reasons. Um, in automotive, we also have this thing called automotive spice, uh, mainly relevant for the embedded software development. You see the picture with the traceability requirements horizontally and vertically in the V model uh, that need to be implemented according to automotive spice. 
And finally, we have this thing called homologation or the type approval where official product data needs to be communicated to the authorities uh, in the end. So we need to link into these sources and identify what's the uh, latest and, and the, the right version. We also have the PLM ALM integration. This is where OSLC is strong. So let's take a closer look at the automotive ALM. We also call this ACES ALM, ACES being for autonomous, connected, electric, and shared, the four major strategic pillars of automotive companies. When we manage software, it's not just the embedded software running on the electronic control units or even uh, whole operating systems as they are currently developed by Carriot and also Mercedes with the MBOS. It's also a lot of data used for parameterizing the software or even for machine learning and the whole backend systems that are part of the product experience. And uh, finally, the offboard apps, for example, on phones and watches. Please note that the life cycle comprises also operation and maintenance, end of life, not just the development. Uh, we will detail this uh, a bit later. This is an overview from uh, our white paper on ACES ALM business capabilities. I think business capability management coming from EAM, from enterprise architecture management, is an interesting approach for business IT alignment and also for managing these uh, large transformations that the OEMs are currently in when trying to become more software driven. Um, I just highlighted a few of the drivers uh, that are pointing to the product operations phase, which is our next topic. So OEMs have always earned substantial money through after sales. Data is the new oil, but uh, the, the car is a smart connected product, has a lot of sensors, and constantly delivers data to the OEM backend that can be uh, monetized, that can be used during machine learning. And uh, that is sometimes also uh, required for regulatory compliance. So again, let's take a look at some uh, specific use cases, requirements regarding the digital threat. In this phase, it's basically about connecting the data from operations to the uh, structures in development and extending our digital thread into this phase. For example, by connecting requirements with actual usage data, we can better understand requirements in different markets and uh, customer segments and also optimize the product portfolio for example which variants are taken with which rate and uh, uh, well eliminating unnecessary options during after sales we want to be able to take error codes coming from certain components ecus uh, back to the design data and to the requirements to uh, work on the root causes and maybe also improve repair. In regulatory compliance, there's an interesting regulation in China called RTM, real-time monitoring for battery electric vehicles. Basically, OEMs are required to provide a lot of data on uh, battery status or charging status and uh, also the position of the cars to the authorities, even to some research institutions. And uh, well, that might be questionable from an European 
point of view, but that's important data, for example, for battery life cycle management, you know, when you decide between second life or recycling of a battery or for the cities to optimize their charging infrastructure. There's also the UNECE regulations on software update and cybersecurity management. Uh, they are, are related. Cybersecurity over the whole life lifetime requires certain update capabilities to fix security holes. But these updates also need to be secure, for example, uh, encrypted, right? And when we take a look at this from the digital threat point of view, uh, the compatibility management uh, is basically the threat between the S designed e bomb having all this compatibility information, which software goes with which hardware version and so on, to the S maintained and even to the individual car in the field. At the end of the life cycle, these regulations also require some decommissioning, re revocation of the keys and scrapping of digital twins in the back end. So digital threat is really mandatory in that sense also for compliance and the ability to bring cars into the market. That we are coming to our fourth area the product interoperability. We are leaving the pure car business and entering uh, smart city and automotive mobility systems where you also talk about car sharing and so on. Um, here we have the requirement to connect multiple digital twins that are not only in the hands of one company, um, so this is also asking for standards. There's something called the DTC, the Digital Twin Consortium, and with the website digitaltwinconsortium.org, working on these interoperability scenarios from different industries. Uh, of course, standardization is also a big thing for them. Uh, when we think about HD maps that are required for autonomous driving, uh, so detailed maps that are enriched with the traffic and weather, maybe even charging infrastructure information uh, or parking facilities that support automated valid parking and uh, digital customer twins where we have a profile of each driver with the preferences and, and uh, the options uh, that can be mapped to the uh, leased and uh, rented car. So maybe even including payment data. There are a few standards that support interoperability between these domains. Uh, we have heard about STEP before. Um, I'm also well representing STEP in our company, and uh, that's important in this field because of the rich data models for product structures and product data. Um, but uh, we are also talking about the cloud. So there are new things coming up. Uh, in addition to the DTC, uh, there's also things like Microsoft Azure's digital twin description language, the DTDL, it has some mechanisms to build twin graphs and also have relationships between these digital twins once they are instantiated. So this leads us to our fifth and final area the IT infrastructure, you already see the cloud and the icon and it's everywhere, you know, in our customers, cloud migration is ongoing. It's not a question if, it's just how much and maybe how hybrid, but um, 
cloud native is an architecture principle and then frequent requirement. You might have uh, heard about the Catina X uh, that also tries to build this European automotive cloud. I'm not going into this, but we have to be aware that the digital threat is in fact a complex enterprise knowledge graph spanning many applications, hundreds of relevant data and probably landscape with several thousand applications. Um, they have different data models, different APIs, not all of them are OSLC enabled. And our customers are currently designing and building solutions for traceability in such an environment. Uh, Martin Ulrich from Bosch has just discussed some integration patterns. So you could do point to point integrations um, and others are striving more for more central link management uh, as we heard in the first presentation uh, today, either in a PLM backbone, maybe in a dedicated link repository. And um, I think it's not just about managing, creating, updating, deleting the links, but also a lot about user experience and business processes and uh, automating things, uh, which again requires a lot of semantics also in the links. So once we have the basic CRUD uh, and, and maybe some UI delegation, we get users complaining about UX and uh, that's also an, an issue to consider. To support our customers, we use an integration architecture blueprint, which we call Sensei for systems engineering and scalable enterprise integration. And uh, this is basically coming from consulting work with the German OEMs on systems integration, uh, systems engineering and integration architecture. Uh, they all had the same target pictures, right? Talking about APIs, cloud, traceability, messaging, streaming, and so on. We took these inputs, structured them into a blueprint and looked at the state of the art. So what's available on the market as tools and implemented uh, some proof of concepts to be able to work in this field. Uh, we have our apps and consumers on the top and uh, the backend application at the bottom, the integration layer again it's it's more like a conceptual blueprint all these boxes could contain several uh, tools um, we have the foundational integration uh, services such as etl streaming messaging uh, the api management which is in the engineering it as i know it not as common as you would think, or as it is in other areas such as after sales and also sales. Process integration with business process management workflow. And finally, the systems engineering specifics where linked data, including the, the meaning of that data, the ontology is an important point where OSLC comes into play. This whole sense thing is uh, described in another white paper. Uh, you will find the link at the end of this presentation. And basically this uh, concludes this. There you have it, the automotive digital thread. Um, and in summary, this spans the development, the operations and also uh, other companies, the interoperability. Uh, and ACES software is currently an important topic for automotive. They are investing a lot in the capabilities to uh, make software one of their core competencies and not just buy that, outsource it. And with that PLM, ALM integration is also becoming more important for them. Standards and interoperability are uh, still important 
and uh, well, you have seen Sensei mm -hmm. as a systems integrator. We just uh, offer this for integration architecture topics. Yeah, thank you. Um, this concludes this presentation. Uh, would appreciate your comments and questions. Thank you so much, Jens. Appreciate the the time and and your introduction to to uh, this this vision of being a uh, digital thread and, and what are all the pieces and parts that are coming together. Um, taking a look at the questions that we have, I think uh, we we have a good question here. Of, um, how do you use the ontology from a sensei blueprint? So so how does that ontology come together, and how does how does uh, your construct um, bring that to life? Yeah, we didn't create our own ontology. Uh, we looked at existing ontologies coming from very basic things into systems engineering specific ontologies. And uh, well, conceptually, we have this topic in the blueprint, but this is not a uh, product that you buy or license coming with some ontology. Um, I know there are other vendors such as SBE Vision that presented last year uh, that are uh, bringing some of that with their product. Okay, the, the, that, that's helpful. Um, another question that we have in here is, and it's actually uh, great. Thanks for asking this question because this, this was this was the question that I wanted to ask as well. Was um, how is your team exploiting OSLC, and 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 in what areas is it is it uh, benefiting your team, and then in what areas is it uh, do you see it need to grow to be able to make your job and your objective easier to reach? Well. You know, I'm working for a systems integrator, so uh, our direct benefit is that OSLC doesn't solve every problem. Uh, it leaves some space for systems integrator to uh, do consulting and, and fixing the problems. So we help customers implement uh, solutions based on our OSLC. Um, also in the IBM Jazz environment, and um, when when you ask which areas uh, I would see uh, needing improvement, I could just support uh, the priorities from the previous presenters. Uh, so having mechanisms for global uh configuration management and and the uh, link indexing or repository um i think is required the other thing i touched upon earlier in my presentation was the was the user experience not sure how much oslc can really solve that problem but um once we have solved the basic uh data uh management problems uh, ux is of importance because um, the engineers are uh, lost in uh, these complex processes this cannot be uh, solved with training and, and coaching long run right right okay all right that, that makes sense to me i think that that fits in the pragmatics that oftentimes we as in consultants operate in is as we work with the, the land where it is right now uh which is where you're talking about pragmatically uh leveraging what oslc is today the tools that support it um but then necessarily adding other components or uh, constructs to be able to bring the other data together to be able to meet the needs of your your users and and i and i would echo what you said is that um, as we put this piping together, as we make connections, that's when the user experience becomes more important because once engineers try to use the tools, they need to have operate logically, they need to do what they expect them to do. So I think that's a, a great um, segue into where, where we're going to need to go with these integrations, not just connecting the pipes, but also being able to make sure that everybody understands what data is flowing, what data is available and why it's available. So 
Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, I think that we're doing an excellent job of staying on time and on schedule um, and being able to uh, make sure that everybody has a chance to be able to ask questions and be able to um, work further on these topics. So thank you so much. And um, thank you. We're, we, we appreciate your time today. Sure. Now, uh, we're going to...